Welcome to this month's Stamps by Judith and Heather video. Again, I'm going to play with some new stamps. We have our new um, Sketchy Poppy, new Twiggy Branch. There's also new Pottery Vase. And I'm going to show you some fun things to do with that. We're going to start off making this card right here. And it's the Sketchy Poppy. And I already have my bushel basket stamped. I'm going to start off by coloring this. I'm going to grab three colors of Tombows. And again, this will be at the end of the video. Here are the Tombow, or end of the card segment, the Tombow colors used. I'm going to start off with my light brown. I always start light to dark. working pretty quickly. Put my light brown base in. Then I'm going to take and pick up my dark color with my lighter marker and build my color. Build up the shading in the basket. Okay. A little bit across the band. The handle of the basket. I'm going to switch to my dark color directly and use it sparingly, but on the cross supports a little bit more. You hear our birds chirping. They kind of like to hear me talk, so they talk when I talk. I'm going to take a khaki color and age my basket a little bit. Okay, Got my antiqued wood on there and then I'm going to go s switch back to my light brown and just blend it in a little bit. Well, there's my basket. Get the right lids on the right markers. Okay, now I'm going to take scratch piece of paper, cover up my basket, grab my black ink, and my sketchy poppy. Before I stamp this on there, I'm just going to make sure I have it inked. Slide it up so just the top edge of the basket is showing, and start Filling your basket. I'm actually going to move this up a little bit overlap. There's some gaps. It's not a big problem because we'll start filling it in with other interactive stamps. I'm going to take one down here. A poppy down there. There and one there, and I know it looks a little haphazard right now. Now I'm going to close up my ink pad before I stick my elbow in it and grab some markers, tambos. Starting off with my light pink. Throw some loosely on there because there really isn't a flower to color in. Go beyond it. <coughs> if you've ever seen Judith or myself 
do the sample where we'll color like this with a marker and then draw the lines in afterwards. That's kind of where this stamp idea came from. Okay, we'll take some pink. pink on there. And then a little bit of red. really should have had one more flower. One, two, three, four. Should have had seven, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. You always want to have odd numbers when you're stamping and building. There's my green. more than one color. My blue. You can see how much that changes how, how it looks. Okay, and I'm going to take some soft brown. Same one I originally colored the basket in. Some dirt, a little bit of brown for the stems. Okay, so that's the basic thing area, but now we need to fill in where these gaps are. I'll go back to my scratch piece of paper with everything stamped all over it. Move these markers out of the way and my hunter green ink. I'm going to take my C29 sprig and start just filling in the basket. Down here, cover up head. You stamp more than once, you do get a little bit of dimension. So the sprigs will fade off. And just start building. I want those to tie in a little bit more, so I'm going to take my green marker. Put a little bit of green on them. Back to the blue. And then back to the brown. I'm going to take my brown and just deepen it a little bit where everything goes into the basket. I want the sprigs to stand out a little bit more just so they don't blend in completely. So I'm going to take a little bit of a lime green and throw it little patches here and there in the sprigs. So there's basically the foliage is in the basket, but I want to build it a little bit more. So I'm going to take the next step. Grab a stubby stamp, my rainbow ink pad, 
and you can just add bold daisies. that for right now. And then I'm going to switch to a fade out leaf stamp. And every time you'd stamp this it would look a little bit different. I don't think I ever stamped the same thing twice. Take my soft gray marker, add shadows here and there, not worrying about what side the light is coming from, I'm just adding the shadows pretty much everywhere. And that is how you fill the basket. Again, here's the finished card using the sketchy poppy. Next stamp I'm going to use is the new pottery vase. And there's a lot you can do with that. Here's a, four different cards. This one has the pottery vase and the sprig in it. Pottery vase, I should say the sprig and the twiggy branch. This is the pottery vase, twiggy branch, and the fir branch. Vase, twiggy branch, stickweed, vase, twiggy branch, and then some stubbies. So just different variations of coloring. Set some of my supplies over here out of the way. And I'm going to start off. There's my pottery vase. I'm going to stamp a couple of them on here. To fill in, I'm going to take and cover my pottery vase up. Grab my twiggy branch. Start off with just the plain old twiggy branch. There's the twiggy branch in the base. You can take and stamp some down around the bottom. You can overlap the base. This one, same thing. that up. There we go, we'll get those two. Alright, now to color my vase, some of the options. Start off always working light to dark. This is a soft gray. Grab my dark gray marker. And build the color and tap the light marker onto the dark marker. Take set that marker down, throw some blue in there. Go back and soften it a little bit with my light gray. And you can make the hearts and stripes any colors you want. So it's a green. Light brown. And even something as simple as the light brown. You can build the darker color changes it dramatically. Okay, now to color the twiggy branch, 
green, mossy green. Just going over the lines. And our blue, once you get going, you can really, just a little bit, whip through this quite quickly. So you really shouldn't have to put a whole lot of thought into where you're putting the color. You're just sort of tracing the edge. Brown. bit of brown for the bottom so it's not floating. Get a little on the base, no big deal. You can change the tone of it a little bit by just throwing a little bit of lime green in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take this is a foliage stamp. It was meant for like the bottoms of tulips and things like that. But I'm going to take and use it a little bit of a different way. I'm going to take and stamp it once, ink it again, turn it, and keep turning it, and I get an aster. So that one little stamp becomes an aster or a mum or something like that. I'm going to take it, put it on the tops of my twiggy branch, you can make them all the way around, you can make them partial. I would recommend doing odd numbers. So there's three, one over here. Four. Five. And there's my asters. And I'm going to take my three leaves stamp, and my black ink. I can take this and fill in where I might need a little bit more greenery where there might be some gaps. And then to color, grab my lime green. Lime green on them. And my mossy green. And I'm going to actually end with the dark blue, or not the dark blue, the um, periwinkleish blue. And now, since we don't want the colors to be so isolated, I'm going to grab a stick, if I can find the right one, stick solid flower, and take and add solid flowers. In there. And on the big poppy basket, I forgot to add the dots, but you can add dots to any card in blue. It softens it. Okay, to fill this one in, we have our pottery vase, where we already stamped our twiggy branch. I'm going to color my pottery vase with the soft brown. my 
yourself brown. Grab my dark brown. Pick up the dark brown with my light brown. Shade it. Take my dark brown and add my high highlights or shadows actually, not highlights. Grab my mossy green. Throw that in there. And our blue. Again, I'm not worrying about staying too close to the lines. Oops, forgot to color in the stripes on our base. Red. I'm going to take a little bit deeper red just to shade the stripe and then my blue. Oops. You know, I just realized I forgot on this one is the gray for the shadow. back and add your gray. Do the same thing here. And my gray. I'm actually going to add my brown. Anchor it. My brown. Also throw some gray in there sometimes. That's a little bit of the shading. Then I'm going to take my fur branch stamp. This is C69, one of our most used stamps, as you can tell from the top of mine. And I am going to switch to my hunter green ink. Make sure. Last thing you want to do is have the wrong color and stamp some fir branches over my twiggy branch. Same at the bottom. Stamp multiple times. Oops, one more. There we go. So there's my fir branch. I'm going to grab a fine line pen. I prefer a pilot pen. Draw some squiggly wires on there. And then I'm going to take my little solid light bulb. And clean it off. This is just water on a paper towel that I was blotting it off on. Using my rainbow pad. Not every light has to be hitting a wire. You get the idea. As I'm going up my color scale, I'm actually not bothering to clean. As long as I'm going from light to dark, your colors will blend a little bit. But that doesn't actually bother me. And then clean your stamp off. And grab my dots. And the last thing I'm going to do is take my red over my 
twiggy branch actually has some little dots on it, so I'm just going to take my red marker and accent those a little bit so they pop. It looks like I have holly berries. And there's your fir branches in a vase. You can do the same thing with the stickweed. It's this guy. I stamped it with the twiggy branch and the stickweed. There's the twiggy branch, stickweed, and then I use the snowflake to create the little puffs. And this one has the twiggy branch and the sprig and then bold flowers and then used light and dark markers on this one, light and dark markers on this one for the base. And then the colors used on the pottery base are all right here and they'll be posted at the end. Hope you have fun. Fill your vase with other creative ideas.